What's up YouTube, I'm Guy, and today on the channel I'd like to talk about the Omega Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch. More specifically, I'd like to talk about the clasp and the bracelet that come on this watch by default. If you've been following my channel for a while now, you know that this is a watch that I have been thinking about adding to my collection. But I had a major mm, reservation or fear, honestly, and that was would this watch fit me comfortably. I'm extremely fussy when it comes to how a watch fits on the wrist, if I'm being perfectly honest. And I was concerned because number one, the clasp only has two positions of micro adjust, which is to say there's not much micro adjust at all. And number two, Omega does not make half links for this bracelet. So you are pretty much in the position of it better fit or it won't fit. Well, I went over to an authorized dealer and told them, you know, this is what, um, is stopping me from buying it. Could you size one up and let me see how it fits? They were happy enough to accommodate me. And as I had suspected, it was either a little bit too tight or significantly too loose. The problem with a little bit too tight in my neck of the woods is that when it's hot and humid outside, it starts to feel a whole heck of a lot too tight. So I knew it wasn't going to work for me. Luckily, when I was talking about that problem that I was concerned about in the first video I did of the Speedmaster, a lot of comments came in and people said, you know, you can get an adjustable clasp and install it after the fact. It's an official Omega part. It's not some sort of third party aftermarket part. So while I didn't really relish the idea of having to make a modification to a watch that's gonna cost thousands and thousands of dollars just to make it fit correctly. I liked it so much that I said, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the trigger, I'm gonna try it. So I got the watch, I ordered the clasp, you also need to order some end links as well, and decided I was gonna see how it would work out. Well, suffice to say, I'm actually really happy with the new clasp on the bracelet. The fit is pretty much perfect. I would not go so far as to say that the bracelet is as comfortable as my Rolex Submariner Oyster bracelet with glide lock, but it's certainly more than adequate and I'm pretty happy with it. So what I wanna do today is I wanna show you the parts that you need to order if you'd like to do this modification to your Mega Speedmaster. I'll give you the part numbers. I will also show you the tools that I recommend you use and I'll give you some tips and tricks, give you some uh, pitfalls that hopefully you'll avoid that I didn't, but uh, you know, I learned the hard way and I'll share them with you guys. All right, guys, here's some of the stuff you're going to need to do this conversion. Before we get into the tools, though, let's talk about the actual parts. This here is the original Omega Speedmaster class, but I'm going to give you a quick look at that up close. So the problem with the Omega Speedmaster clasp is not that it's not a good high quality clasp, it is. It's that there's only, as you can see there on the side, one, two micro adjust points. That is unacceptable for me. I could not get a good fit on the wrist with just two points of micro adjustment and no half links on the bracelet or anything. So while this is an overall nice clasp, it's, you know, the swing arm, very good. It just was not going to work for my purposes. You can see there's the extra links that come from the bracelet still installed. But uh, what we did was take this off and replace it with a new clasp. So this is the new clasp that I installed on the watch. And if you look at the side of the clasp, you can see that there's no holes at all. So what does that mean there's no micro adjust? Well, no, it doesn't. If we look on the underside, we can see that there's a little push button and we can modify or adjust the fit of the clasp in up to six different increments or positions uh, very easily by just pushing that down and making a small adjustment, sliding the clasp over you know, in basically two millimeter increments. This upgrade is awesome, I highly recommend it. Here's the parts that you're going to need. Number one, the clasp. It is part number 117STZ001154. That was at the Omega Boutique about $110. Number two, you're gonna need a couple. You're gonna need two end links. Those are the same part number, 18ST1589. It comes with the end link, and then down at the bottom, uh, the two screws and the pins. Here is the end link that I'm talking about. It is this piece here. It uh, screws onto the clasp, 
and then attaches to your first link of the bracelet. The only downside of this uh, uh, modification, the end link does not match up with the bracelet links perfectly. It's just a little bit off. In terms of, of the look, you can see we have these nice polished center links here. On, the, on these end links, it's just not quite as good. And if you look at it from the profile, you can see that the, the edge here is just not a perfect, flawless, like absolutely aesthetically smooth fit. It works, it's functional. Just uh, you know, keep that in mind that while no one's probably gonna notice this, it's not 100% perfect. Here's the end link on the other side of the clasp as well. It's the exact same end link. It works the exact same way. Just attach it to the clasp and then attach it to your first link on your bracelet. Pretty easy to do, but there are some pitfalls that you might run into. Let's talk about the tools that you're gonna need to do this conversion. All right, so you've got your watch, you've ordered your clasp, you've ordered your end links. What are you gonna need to physically install that new clasp on your bracelet? Number one, I don't have it in frame here. I highly, highly recommend that you get some form of magnification. I have a visor that you wear on your head that has multiple steps of magic magnification. The screws that we're dealing with on this bracelet are insanely small. So definitely do yourself a favor, get some sort of magnification. I use a visor that I got off of Amazon for like 20 bucks or less. Really, really important to have that. Number two, I highly recommend getting some tweezers so that you can handle the screws without losing them. Uh, I'm just using some relatively inexpensive black plastic tweezers also purchased on Amazon. I got a whole set of them for under $10 if I'm not mistaken. You're going to want some tweezers. Probably the most important thing not to skimp on is your screwdrivers. This is a Horatech T-shaped screwdriver, which you might also call a hollow ground screwdriver. I got this from Esslinger.com, as you can see on the tag there. This is a two millimeter screwdriver, and I wanna show you the blade on this screwdriver. So I don't know how well it'll show on camera, but as you can see, a hollow ground or T-shaped screwdriver blade. This is gonna help from keeping your screws from getting marred up I've had a lot of good luck with these screwdrivers. You can see that this blade is actually starting to show a little bit of signs of wear. It's probably about time to replace it, but I got through my whole uh, modification without any problems. Really do recommend picking up at least one good screwdriver. These are $20 on esslinger.com for a two millimeter. That's the one that I used. It works perfectly. You're probably going to need fire. This is just a torch lighter. The reason you're gonna need this is because the screws are held into the bracelet with Loctite or thread locking solution. And there's almost no way to break the lock of the thread locking solution without first heating it up. A lot of people are gonna say, oh, you can uh, just take your your bracelet and kind of hold it under hot water, not, not a chance. You got to hammer, <laughs> and I don't mean with a physical hammer, but you got to hammer these screws with some serious heat to get the thread locking compound to loosen up so you can unscrew them. At least I did. Now I would highly recommend also getting some good heavy duty work gloves, at least for, in my case, my left hand, because after heating this screw head up, to the point where the thread locker was loose enough to be able to unscrew them, I couldn't physically touch the metal. I had to wear gloves so that I could then put the screwdriver in and manipulate those screws out of there. Even after heating up these screw heads with the torch lighter for five, six, seven seconds, it was still difficult to unscrew them to, to break that thread lock seal. So. Yeah, you're definitely gonna want a torch lighter. You're gonna wanna be careful. You're gonna wanna use gloves when you're handling this hot metal. And yeah, good luck. That's all I gotta say. It was, it was not exactly super simple. Speaking of Loctite or thread locking compound, you're going to want to use some when you put the screws back in. This is number 222, it's the purple stuff. It is low strength. So when you're reassembling your bracelet, when you're putting those screws back in, you're gonna to wanna to put a little tiny bit of Loctite on them. Get the low strength, the purple kind. Do not, I repeat, do not use the red Loctite. That's basically permanent. 
Don't even use the blue Loctite. The screws are so tiny that they don't need much. A little bit of the low strength purple 222 thread locking Loctite is all you need. A little tiny dab on the screw threads screw them in. You don't have to screw them in so tight once this stuff cures. It's what will keep the screws from backing out. So that's basically it guys. You need your watch, you need the parts, the new clasp, the new end links. You're gonna need a two millimeter screwdriver, you're gonna need some, uh, what do you call these things, tweezers, a torch lighter, some thread locking compound, the purple, low strength kind, uh, I highly recommend also getting magnification visor, having some heavy duty work gloves so that when you're working with the hot metal, you don't burn your fingers and go slow and be careful. It's honestly pretty simple to do. You're simply gonna take the clasp off, keeping the original end links on the clasp themselves, just unscrew there, unscrew there, take the little pin out and that will free up this side of your bracelet. And then you go over to the other side and do the exact same thing. Unscrew there, unscrew there, remove the clasp itself, and in reverse, put the new clasp on. It really is not difficult in theory, but because of the, the tightness of the threads on the screws, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Again, heat them up nice and good, use good solid downward pressure on the screws so that you don't slip out of the slot and yeah, overall, just go slow and be careful. In looking at the original clasp, the one on the right here that is labeled Speedmaster Professional with the new clasp, we can see that it, it's, it's quite a bit smaller. You would expect that because the new clasp offers all of that um, micro adjust, you know, six different positions at uh, I believe two millimeters per position. Yeah, it's just, it's gonna be bigger. Not only is it gonna be overall longer, but it's also quite a bit thicker we hold them up in profile not so much that like it, it's a problem it's not uncomfortable but yeah overall it is it's longer and it's thicker it's something you're gonna have to deal with if you can get a good fit with the bracelets you know uh, with the with the original clasp and you don't need this then you know by all means just do that there's no reason to do this unless like me you could not find a comfortable sizing solution um, and this is absolutely 100% without a doubt the best possible solution for me. So here's the Speedmaster on my wrist, six and three quarter inches. The clasp itself centered up relatively nicely on my wrist. Just a little bit of uh, room, which is the way I like it. Just loose enough that it will slide back and forth if I want it to, uh, but not so loose as to have the head of the watch want to flop around on the wrist. Overall, yeah, very happy with it. It's not, again, too big. Like, it is a little bit bulkier. Than the, than the original clasp, and we'll set them side by side on the wrist here. But it's, it's marginal, it's really not an issue. It's not something that is going to cause a problem for me. I would expect that it wouldn't really be a problem for anybody. All right, thanks for tuning into my video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you either own a Speedmaster and find it uncomfortable, or if you're considering buying a Speedmaster, but you've always said, you know, the, 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 the bracelet kind of worries me, the, the fitament might be a problem, this is a solution. It's not an absolutely free solution. It cost me about 200 US dollars to get the clasp and end links. But I think it was worth it in the end. I'm very happy with it. I like the way that it fits on the wrist. I have no complaints other than I wish I didn't have to spend an extra $200 on a watch that I've already spent thousands and thousands of dollars on. So Omega, if you're listening, come on. Step into the 21st century. I mean, this should be standard, right? All right, guys, if you'd like to help support the channel, there's a list of ways that you can do that down in the description of this and every video I do. If you'd like to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, go ahead and check out those platforms. If you would like to help support the channel and by extension support me, you can go over to Patreon. I really do appreciate the guys that have been over there helping me out. It means the world to me. Number three, if you like anything that I've reviewed and you want to purchase it, you can click on my Amazon affiliate link before you go to Amazon to buy it. And that affords me a small commission. Those commissions do add up and a very big thank you to everyone that has been using those Amazon affiliate links. That's going to do it for now. Thanks again. And until next week, bye now.